This video is supported by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware and by Total Boat. If you'd like to support what I do, consider supporting the companies that support me. Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. As you can see, I've got two large walnut slabs in front of me. These are bookmatched slabs and they will be a bookmatched table in the near future. What's cool about this project is it's a client job, not my client. It's a friend of mine. Uh, we're just using some of the tools here in the shop and we're also going to use a couple different types of epoxy. Well, we're going to talk about a couple different types of epoxy for stabilizing a couple large cracks down here. We're not doing a decorative river table or anything like that with some colored epoxy. This will just be black stabilizing some cracks. Um, but it'll be interesting. I, I haven't really messed with anything that large as far as um, an epoxy pour, which is really not huge epoxy pour. Uh, I'm just familiar using epoxy as an adhesive. What we're doing here is laying out the final size of the table, the two pieces that will be joined together. We're going to cut these a little bit rough, oversized at first. Uh, but one thing to note is uh, my friend put all this in for, gave all this information to the client so that the client could decide which edges and which side of the, the slabs that the table came from. So we're trying to include just the characteristics that the client wanted and exclude some of the characteristics that the client did not want. Every large slab of wood is unique and they present their own challenges and problems and such. You can get a good look at the two cracks here now that we will fill with, with black epoxy. So these are the, the top surfaces. We're gonna have to fill those. We're gonna have to fill these smaller sections here, knock out all the loose debris. Uh, there's a couple more up here. And these are still just a smidgen oversized. So now we gotta figure out the order of our operations that fits well with our environment. So the biggest problem or the biggest hurdle we have to cross is these not being perfectly flat in their rough state. That's an, that's an obvious statement, but we have a little bit of a twist here. So let me make sure I don't have any shims on, under it. We are just messing with it. So this has about a half inch of twist. So if I push this down, that corner will rise up a little bit. So we wanna mill this flat, at least one surface before gluing up because we can use that surface to get a nice perpendicular cut at the seam, glue them together nice and neat. So. What we're going to do is, is take these over to the CNC machine to flatten them, but we're going to put a shim on the opposite corners where it's sitting high and it'll split the difference. We'll push this down. Instead of this being a half inch up, it'll go down to a quarter of an inch up. That'll be a quarter of an inch up and that'll distribute however much we have to remove from both sides. With that said, we're not removing anything from the top. We're actually going to flip these over and do that same process on the bottom side. So each one of these will be flattened, roughly flattened. We're not gonna go crazy trying to stretch every little bit of it, but we just need enough flat reference surface so that we could also use the CNC to make a nice perpendicular seam cut on both of these boards. We got the bottom side down to a, a rough bottom plane. We're not gonna go too crazy to make sure we get 100% of these because that's gonna be on the bottom side and it's not too important. What we need is a nice flat reference surface just to get a 90 degree edge uh, before glue up. So now we can flip these upside down so that the flattened side is up against the spoil board and line it up in such a way that we know the location of our rough straight edge and then use the machine to cut an accurate straight edge perpendicular to the freshly flattened face.
The final step before pouring epoxy is to create an overflow dam with a hot glue gun and then seal the inside of the cracks the best we can with a couple coats of de-waxed shellac. This will stop a lot of air from being pulled through the surface of the wood in the annoying form of bubbles. Now let's talk about epoxy and, and specifically how versatile this total boat epoxy is. We're going to break a few rules, but it's going to be okay, so, so just let me explain. For a relatively small epoxy pour like this, the recommendation is to use Total Boat's high performance with slow hardener. However, Jeremy brought the tabletop variety to the party, and as the name implies, it's best suited for tabletop applications, but its characteristics will also play well here. Because Jeremy has a tremendous amount of experience with this exact epoxy, and because we have more of it on hand, that's the route we're going. So again, if I'm giving a recommendation, I'd say to use the high performance with a slow hardener. The high performance resin system, it, it's thinner, it'll reach the little areas inside the crack better, it'll, it'll seep in better and, and set up a little bit faster. The tabletop, it's thicker, it's, it's meant to self level, so it's actually better suited for top coat applications. But as you can see, I trusted Jeremy's experience with this and it worked just fine. You can experiment with how deep and wide of a pour you can get away with, but the general rule of thumb is that both products can only be poured at about one quarter of an inch at a time, so step pouring is necessary. When you try to go thicker in a single pour, the epoxy will heat up and it'll force the, the epoxy exothermic reaction, it'll force that faster and you could potentially cook the epoxy. Smoke and ruinous bubbles will alert you that the epoxy is cooking if you push it. You can step pour with the epoxies, all of them, by pouring again when the epoxy is gelled or a few hours after your last pour. As long as it's set up and not cured, you can pour again, making it almost preferable to a deep pour system that takes three days to cure in a dust-free area. With a step pour, you can control the color a bit more and build up thickness just as easily as like a like a two inch thick set system which total boat also sells as you can see we have two uh, bubbles or blowouts on the bottom side of our epoxy pour where the epoxy was just too heavy and it was more uh, more powerful than the bond for the tape so we'll chalk that one up to me i've never done this before and i taped the bottom side so lesson learned uh, this is easy to clean up though, relatively easy to clean up though. Uh, as you can see here and here, I've already been shaving it with a hand plane and it works quite well, it's just a little slow. So what I'm going to do first is use a flush trim method on this, this uh, laminate router. So I've offset the base over here so it's kind of cantilevered over uh, when it's in use. And now I can set the router bit height just short of this surface right here. That allow me to do a flush trim setup like this, but because this is kind of kind of a DIY setup here, this isn't that strong and there's a little bit of flex in this connection. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the surface with this. I don't wanna gouge into the, into the walnut here. I just wanna get it close, and once it's real close, I can finish it up with the hand plane. All right, so that is smooth enough for a reference plane. We'll still have to come back and do our final sanding. Flip over. Flip over. And I'm recording audio, by the way. <clears throat> did you just fart? Uh, you probably did, but I'm not breathing right now. No, it wasn't me, but it's whatever, whoever it was, it was impressive. <laughs> You know it's a good feeling? Our flat reference surface is still flat. Yeah, that's, that's nice. 
That's a good feeling. I thought for sure that it may have warped. All right, can you see this center seam? It's pretty hard to show up on camera, but you can see it right there, that little tick mark. This is the center seam, and we flatten the top side as much as we need to anyway. Uh, we're not worried about this little low spot here because we're gonna cut this off about two inches or so in. So also on the, the machine bed, I scratched the center line of the machine so now we can flip this over so the good side, this freshly flattened top side will be facing down. Line up the center seam of the, the joint here onto the machine bed. And then we can use the machine to cut a perfectly perpendicular cut on either side to establish our total length of 70 inches. And when we're on that process, uh, we can also go ahead and cut some shallow pockets for the legs to fit into. With the pockets cut on the bottom of the table, the legs should, and they do, slide right into place. So these legs are from Rockler Woodworking and Hardware, and this is just what the client picked out. There's a lot of different options for size of legs, length of legs, well, width, length, as well as some color options or just raw metal. Lots of options to choose from. This is the combination that the client picked out. Now, uh, these are going to be attached with some lag screws and it's important to note that when you attach uh, a set of legs like this, the center in this case is just two holes that are drilled. So it's going to pin the center in place, the center's never going to move. Wood will always move, metal won't. So you need to have something to allow for that expansion and contraction. And in these table leg uh, pieces, there are slots on either end. So holes in the center to pin it, slots on either end to attach it and still allow expansion and contraction. While we have this set up on the CNC machine with the bottom side facing up, it's just a big work surface too. So it just makes sense to leave it here to do all the sanding on the bottom side, make sure we have the legs attached and all that uh, before we flip it over. Once we flip it over, then we can address the live edges, cleaning those up the best we can, sand the top, and then sand the top, and then sand the top, and then sand the top, because there's gonna be a lot of sanding, because this is a lot of surface area. Then we can apply some finish. And just that fast, we got ahead of ourselves with the order of operations here. Uh, we should have added the C-channel pockets and the C-channel before sanding. The whole point of this C-channel is to keep the wood flat over time. So this is just regular 3 16 of an inch thick C-channel. It's two inches wide, one inch deep, and in our case, it is 34 inches long. These are milled just like the table legs with holes in the middle and slots on either end. Late last night, we were able to spray two coats of seal coat shellac on the entire table. And then this morning, we're starting upside down. As you can see, we've got the legs installed and we're applying a uh, armor seal finish to the bottom side, one, maybe two coats. Then we'll flip it over and put three to five-ish coats on the top side. And 
And here is the final result. I know every woodworking video on YouTube ends with something like, uh, it turned out great and I love it. But my goodness, this turned out great <laughs> and I absolutely love it. As with most other slab tables, the design is simple and it forces focus onto the wood itself. The book matched grain, it, it's interesting all over. The epoxy and the cracks, it, that highlights a natural flaw in the wood rather than being a feature itself. And the live edge has just enough curves to look natural and not too much to be uncomfortable to the touch. Oh, and the, also the contrast of the sapwood on both live edges, it's just, it's just perfect. Just enough to let you know that it's there. Big, huge thank you to Rockler Woodworking and Hardware for supporting this video. I'll have several links, including the table legs, in the description below. Be sure to check those out. And another big thank you to Total Boat for supporting this video as well. I'll have a couple links to their products that I personally like in the description as well. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, be sure to go to my website, jayscustomcreations.com slash newsletter, and sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything that I publish. That's it. You guys take care. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.